Hello everyone, this is Etho, and this is part 3 of my mob system tutorial. If you haven't seen part 1 or 2 yet, you should watch those beforehand and in order. So a uh, big question I got from my last video is why the pigs weren't able to swim up this mob evader. It's because pigs can fit in a one by one space and so our mob evader is full of those so with this mob system I'm building here it's uh, intended for hostile mobs the, the tall mobs and the spiders um, it could probably be adjusted to work with the farm animal mobs but um, there would be a few things you would need to change uh, you would need lots of lighting down here and you would need to replace the top of these spawning pads with grass. You'd have to run a grass staircase down uh, to our spawning pads here. You would also need to change this mob evader so it's solid water source blocks. And even if you do that, the mobs will probably drown on their way up, so you would need to make a break probably halfway through a horizontal break uh, in the mob evader so that the mobs can catch their breath in the uh, air spaces and then continue uh, with another mob evader halfway up to the surface. Um, I haven't uh, explored making this work with uh, friendly mobs yet in my LP series. Uh, once I start building level 3 in my LP, then I will probably make another tutorial teaching you how to uh, spawn and collect the friendly mobs. Even if you uh, run grass down there though, I need to point something out to you. It's best if you do it in an area that doesn't have much grass because all along our surface here is grass so it's very slim chances they will spawn in your spawning pads they would most likely spawn at the surface here so that's uh, some things to keep in mind um, so we are going to look at some ways of improving the efficiency of our system uh, one thing we're going to want to do we can increase the chances of mobs spawning on our spawning pads by making it so that they can't spawn in other areas that we don't want them to, such as the surface of our world here. So, mobs can spawn within 144 blocks all around you. So from this, this would be the center point. That's a huge distance, so... Ideally, you would want to place torches regularly along the surface of your world. Um, at least 128 blocks around this point in a circle. Uh, it would be better if you. It would be slightly better if you placed it 144 blocks around this point in a square, though. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but that's something you should do. Alright guys, so I did a little bit of math uh, off camera. And I'm going to attempt to explain to you a little bit better uh, why you would want to place torches 128 blocks around you in a circle. I'm not the best at explaining things, but I'm, I'm going to try here. Um, currently, the maximum number of hostile mobs in single player is 79 at any time. Um, and any mob that spawns within 128 blocks of you will probably take a, roughly a minute to a minute and a half to despawn. 
So if you don't have torches around you, they're going to be able to spawn within that area. And it'll take a minute, and a, a minute to a minute and a half to despawn. So Some people were wondering why no mobs were spawning on their two spawning pads that they built. Well, this is why. If you figure out the area, 128 blocks in a circle all around you, uh, that's pi times 128 squared, or sorry, pi times 128 um, with a 2 exponent over it is 51,472. That's a lot of area. Our two spawning pads are 14 by 14, and since there's two, you would times it by two. That's only 396. So, it's much more likely mobs will spawn on the surface of your world than they will on your spawning pads because of such a large difference, unless you have torches all around the 128 blocks. Um, no mobs will spawn within 28, or uh, sorry, 24 blocks of you. So if you minus uh, the area of a circle with a radius of 24 from our uh, circle with a radius of 128, we get uh, 49,662. And so in comparison, our mob spawning pads down here, two of them, um, there's about a 0.8% chance that they will spawn on them instead of on the surface here. And my math's probably not perfect, but that's about what it is. And that's not even considering all the cave systems because mobs can spawn in cave systems too so yeah uh, in my LP world well this is my LP world but in my mob system over there uh, you'll notice there's a lot of water around me and that pretty much is equivalent to placing torches so most of the area around my island there is water so that helps to improve the efficiency of my system by a lot. Okay, sorry guys, I forgot to mention that uh, placing the torches or having water or any other block type that mobs can't spawn on in that 128 uh, block radius sphere all around you is only going to make a difference uh, at night because during the day mobs won't spawn on the surface anyway. So, and also, I say 128 blocks, that's assuming if you are not moving. Uh, so if you're moving around a lot on your surface, you might want to make it even bigger. But, uh, so a big thing you're going to want to do is light up the tunnels, all the cave systems, Ideally, in that 128 block radius, too. Uh, that's a huge pain, I know. Um, at the very least, this is what you're going to want to do. Uh, you're going to want to light up the ones underneath your spawning pads. Uh, near, near all your spawning pads. Uh, but most uh, important is that you light up any tunnels within this area here uh, within 32 blocks of the surface so especially in this area between the spawning pads and the surface anything above your spawning pads and and like 8 blocks below because if a mob spawns somewhere above you here and you're standing at the surface near there within 32 blocks 
of the mob, and when I say 32 blocks, I mean actual distance in three-dimensional space. Uh, if you're if you're within that 32 block range, the mob is not going to despawn, so you'll be stuck in a cave system forever until you move out of that area long enough for him to despawn. So, kind of a pain to, you're gonna have to, like you can see up here we got a tunnel system. Ideally you're gonna want to find your tunnel systems and then go uh, spelunking. Oh, this is just a small area. You would light this up and then then I would just cover this little area here so that none of the light from the torch makes it to our spawning pads but yet that pocket of space is going mobs aren't going to be able to spawn in this pocket of space because of the lighting from the torches Now none of the light will come to our spawning pads. Uh, once we're all done here and ready to start our system, we got to remove all these torches that we have down here, and also we will remove these ladders. I just have these so I can get on the spawning pads easy. Uh, sorry again, I should explain this in more detail. Uh, the reason why you don't want mobs spawning in a cave system above a spawning pad or in an area where they won't despawn because you're close to them uh, is because assuming the spawning pad was inside one chunk exactly that chunk is a 16 by 16 area assuming this was one chunk, the spawning pad if a mob was above us in a cave system and not despawning, this spawning pad becomes useless because no mobs will spawn here if uh, another mob is in the chunk space. So the only way to keep mobs spawning on your spawning pads is to make sure uh, there's no other mobs. Uh, above or below them. So Etho, how are we supposed to find and light up all the tunnels above and below our spawning pads? Well, it's not as hard as you might think it is. A good trick for finding the tunnels uh, within 32 blocks of the surface in that uh, no despawn zone is to uh, search around and look for tunnels at the surface. It's There's usually quite a few openings. I just found one here. So once you find one, you would go spelunking, light it all up. Nothing really there. Let's check over here. Oh, there's a tunnel here. So we would light this all up. Again, it's pretty small. Um, you'll probably find quite a few tunnels at the surface, so that one was pretty much a dead end. I did find another opening down here. And so Ideally, you would go spelunking, uh, go hunt for some iron, some coal, other resources, and at the same time light up the system, and assuming you're playing legitimately, you'll want the resources. If you're not playing legitimately, uh, I don't know why you're bothering making a mob spawning zone, because you're probably doing it for the items. And so the recent uh, beta patch, beta patch, sorry, uh, 
has introduced another trick too that we can use. Assuming we're looking for tunnels uh, above our spawning pads. Uh, we can walk roughly 24 blocks away from that area. Set your game to easy. And that will cause hostile mobs to start spawning in your tunnel systems. Do this during uh, the daytime so that they won't be spawning on the surface. Then we walk back and we can look for we press F3, it gives all mobs a number that we can spot from a distance. And if you're lucky, I can see a few numbers below us now. Uh, we can follow those and find all the cave systems. And that works for going below too. Uh, another trick you can do, see there's numbers above there. Uh, actually some of those might be pigs and stuff. Uh, another trick we can do is if you don't want to use the F3 method we can just dig straight down uh, at one of our pads and listen for any uh, zombie noises or skeletons or spiders or whatever and then we can try to dig toward them and we'll probably find a tunnel system and then we can follow it and usually it's one huge tunnel system in an area it's not a bunch of little ones so if we find the tunnel system we can pretty much uh, light up the whole thing and another trick we can do since we're trying to light up the area above and below our spawning pads uh, in particular to make sure we're within that area we can use our X and Z coordinates to make sure we're within the horizontal area of our spawning pads see there's some numbers below near the bedrock moving around down there so that's a good way of finding tunnels alright I'm just gonna consider another few ways in which we can improve the efficiency of the system when it comes to uh, uh, collecting spiders uh, one thing I did in my in the system I use in my LP is I replaced this front part with slow sand and it seemed to help a bit because uh, spiders although they can still climb slow sand they seem to have uh, trouble doing so and since this is a high traffic area where all the spiders will collect uh, we can help prevent them from climbing around that place by uh, placing slow sand on the walls. Oops. That's one thing you might want to do. Um, another thing you could do... I haven't... Uh, I don't really recommend doing this. And I haven't really tried to see how if much it helps but you can line the outside of your spawning pads the outside one block with slow sand too all the way around make sure you do it both on the bottom and at the top and I think that might help keep spiders from uh, climbing out of the water canals Um, but I don't really recommend it. I think a better way of improving efficiency is just to build more spawning pads. But if you're trying to maximize the system, 
That's one thing you might want to try. Okay guys, that about uh, concludes part 3 of the mob system tutorial. Um, any questions, comments, uh, leave them in the video or send me a PM. I'll do my best to try to respond to you. Uh, I do get quite a few uh, messages though, so it might take me a while. And, uh, oh yeah, I'm going to clarify one thing for you guys, because I know a hundred people are going to respond in the comments otherwise, but uh, spiders can climb sandstone, so stop telling everyone that they can't, because they can. Um, in part four, we're going to start building our drowning system for killing them. We're going to show you how to build just the drowning uh, mechanism, and then we're going to tear that down and build a spider separator and a few other things. Okay, so this has been Etho, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.